Hello and welcome to the worship service at St. Matthew Lutheran Church in Milwaukee. This is the service for November 8, 2020. In the church year, we are on the Sundays of End Time, and this Sunday is Last Judgment Sunday. We begin with the first hymn. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. And also with you. We have come into the presence of God who created us to love and serve him as his dear children. But we have disobeyed him and deserve only his wrath and punishment. Therefore, let us confess our sins to him and plead for his mercy. Merciful, Merciful Father, Father in heaven, heaven I am altogether sinful from birth. In countless ways I have sinned against you and do not deserve to be called your child. But trusting in Jesus, my Savior, I pray, have mercy on me according to your unfailing love. Cleanse me from my sin and take away my guilt. God, our Heavenly Father, has forgiven all your sins. By the perfect life and innocent death of our Lord Jesus Christ, he has removed your guilt forever. You are his own dear child. May God give you strength to live according to his will. Amen. In the peace of forgiveness, let us praise the Lord. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed are they who take refuge in him. Your word, O oh Lord, is eternal. It stands firm in the Let us pray. Lord God Almighty, so rule and govern our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit that we may always look forward to the end of this present evil age and to the day of your righteous judgment. 
Keep us steadfast in true and living faith and present us at last holy and blameless before you. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The psalm for Last Judgment Sunday is Psalm 90. We sing it responsibly. mountains were born, or you brought forth the earth and the world. From everlasting to everlasting you are God. For a thousand years in your sight are like a day that has just gone by. Or like a watch in the night. In every age, O oh Lord, you have been our refuge. You have set our iniquities before you. Our secret sins in the light of your presence. You turn mortals back to dust. You sweep them away in the sleep of death. The length of our days is seventy years or eighty if we have the strength. Yet their span is but trouble and sorrow. Teach us to number our days aright, that we may gain a heart of wisdom. In every age, O oh Lord, you have been our refuge. Satisfy us in the morning with your unfailing love, that we may sing for joy and be glad all our days. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. In every age, O oh Lord, you been our refuge. Our second reading is from the Apostle Paul's first letter to the Thessalonians, chapter 5, the first 11 verses. Now, brothers and sisters, about times and dates, we do not need to write to you, for you know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. While people are saying peace and safety, destruction will come on them suddenly as labor pains on a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. But you, brothers and sisters, are not in darkness so that this day should surprise you like a thief. You are all children of the light and 
children of the day. We do not belong to the night or to the darkness. So then let us not be like others who are asleep, but let us be awake and sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober, putting on faith and love as a breastplate and the hope of salvation as a helmet. For God did not appoint us to suffer wrath, but to receive salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. He died for us so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live together with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up just as, in fact, you are doing. This is the Word of God. Alleluia. Watch, therefore, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. Alleluia. Alleluia. Christ, the Son of God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Gospel is recorded by St. Matthew, chapter 25, beginning at verse 31. Jesus said, When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, he will sit on his glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate the people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my Father. Take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in, or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? The king will reply, Truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you who are cursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not invite me in. I needed clothes, and you did not clothe me. I was sick and in prison, and you did not look after me. They also will answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry, see you hungry or thirsty, or a stranger or needing clothes or sick or in prison and did not help you? He will reply, Truly I tell you, whatever you did not do for one of the least of these, you did not do for me. Then they will go away to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise be to you, Christ. We sing Day of Wrath, O Day of Mourning. Day of wrath, O oh day of mourning, 
Grace, mercy, and peace to you from him who was and is and is to come, Jesus our Savior. Amen. For our meditation on this Last Judgment Sunday, we turn to the Old Testament book of Daniel, chapter 7, verses 9 and 10, part of a vision God gave to Daniel. As I looked, Thrones were set in place, and the Ancient of Days took his seat. His clothing was as white as snow. The hair of his head was white like wool. His throne was flaming with fire, and its wheels were all ablaze. A river of fire was flowing, coming out from before him. Thousands upon thousands attended him, 10,000 times 10,000 stood before him. The court was seated, and the books were opened. This is the word of the Lord. Dear friends, in Jesus, our Savior and our Judge, Safety experts warn us that there are a lot of things in our homes that seem very unthreatening and safe, not dangerous at all. There are two cleaning products in most of our homes. They don't seem like they would be a problem, but mix them and it can knock you out. It could even take your life. A scented candle in the room might be a nice touch, but it could also be a horrible torch, which could burn the house down. These things that seem very ordinary and unthreatening can actually be extremely dangerous. And then we have this scene from the book of Daniel. This scene might kind of be the reverse of those things in our home that seem just fine and safe but actually are quite dangerous. This seems like a frightening and very dangerous situation. We believe Daniel was about 65 years old when he received this vision, and at the end of it he reported 
my face turned pale. And I don't think it would really matter what age you were or what your background and experience was. If you had seen this vision, I'm sure we would all be pale with fear. A throne which is on fire with, with rivers of, fly, of fire flowing out around it. Thousands and thousands of angels, which to us might look like warriors, surrounding that. It, it's clear that this is a courtroom. And even in an ordinary courtroom, even if you're innocent, it can be kind of intimidating. It's like if we are stopped by the police. Even if we haven't been speeding, it still shakes us up a little bit. And now this vision is of this courtroom. And there is this Ancient of Days on the throne with bright white clothing and this white woolly hair. This scene is frightening. But this scene is safer than it seems. This scene from the book of Daniel is safer than it seems because of who sits on the throne and because of what's in those books. The Ancient of Days is sitting on the throne. This is the only place in the Bible where God the Father Almighty is called the Ancient of Days. If that snow-white clothing and that woolly white hair was not unsettling enough, then the fact that the throne itself on which he sits is on fire, that fact is quite unsettling. But in this chapter, chapter 7 of Daniel, this scene is probably the least frightening. Right before this scene, Daniel sees seven savage beasts. There's a lion, and the lion has wings so it can even more rapidly destroy things. There's also a bear, and this bear is chomping on three ribs in its mouth. There's a leopard, and the leopard has wings too. And then there's the worst one. There's a beast with multiple heads and horns, and on the horns there are eyes. That frightening vision precedes this one. And what comes after this vision is a description of what those beasts mean. It turns out that God is showing a large section of history and the four beasts are four different kingdoms. The first beast is the Babylonian Empire. And after that came the Medes and the Persians. And after that, Alexander the Great and the Greeks, he he was the leper, the one who with such speed conquered so much of the known world. And lastly, that most frightening beast, one with the horns with eyes, one which also had iron teeth. That's the Roman Empire. God gave these symbols of these mighty and mighty frightening empires. So this vision that we already read about is really the, the least frightening, but we wouldn't really say it's comforting either, would we? This vision of the throne on fire and the white woolly judge, that's not really comforting. No, the, the comfort comes a little bit later. The comfort comes in verses 13 and 14 of this chapter where Daniel says, In my vision I also saw this. There before me was one like a son of man coming from the clouds of heaven. He approached the ancient of days and was led into his presence. He was given authority, glory, and sovereign power. All nations and peoples of every language worshipped him his dominion is an everlasting dominion that will not pass away, and his kingdom is one that will never be destroyed. Unlike those other beasts which were killed one after the other, this Son of Man 
has a dominion that will never be destroyed. This is a comforting prophecy of Jesus, our Savior. In Scripture, the words with which Jesus most frequently describes himself are these words, the Son of Man. The Son of Man came for this. The Son of Man did that. The Son of Man did not come for another reason. So this ancient of days is safer than he might seem. seem. He's sitting on that throne but he sends his eternal life, his eternal son, to take the form of a man, to be born of a woman, to come to this earth, to be the savior of all people so that one day there would be this scene in heaven of people of all nations and tribes bowing down and worshiping him. This scene is safer than it seems Because what God is teaching us is that the Father is God the Father Almighty. He is eternal. He has always been around. He always will be. And through all these different tumultuous changes in history, there he is, sitting on the throne calmly, directing the world's affairs according to his will. And his will is that he would send his son to give his all, to give his perfect life, to to give his suffering and death to all, so that there could be people of all nations who trusted in him for eternal life. This ancient of days sitting on the throne has seen it all, and through it all, He remains the same great and gracious Father. Unperturbed, unshook, even though where he's sitting is actually in flames. And God is reminding us that even when our own world around us may seem to be going down in flames, when things may seem to be falling apart for whatever reason, If not the world, then our own personal life may have its problems and crises. God is reminding us that we are in his all-powerful hand. And if he is not perturbed as he sits on a throne on fire, as the world's history unfolds, we, his people, do not need to be frightened either. We sing in that wonderful hymn, Jesus, Your Blood and Righteousness. We sing about being in the middle of a flaming world, midst flaming world, in these arrayed, covered in Jesus' holiness and righteousness. With joy shall we lift up our heads when Jesus returns to earth the second time. The first time coming, the Son of Man did not come to judge the world but to save it. But coming at the end, he's not coming to save it, but to judge it. And we can look up on that day in joy because this scene is safer than it seems. It's safer because of what's in those books. The court was seated and the books were open. In courtrooms, a person knows that they are in trouble if they they hear that the book is going to be thrown at them. The powers that be are looking for any and every violation this person has committed so that they can be in the most trouble possible. They can convict that person. They can imprison that person. Well, what are these books that were opened there in the presence of the Ancient of Days in that courtroom? Well, the book of Daniel was written centuries before the book of Revelation, but there are certain overlaps between them. And in the Revelation of St. John, he talks about these books. John also was given a vision, and he said, I saw the dead, great and small, standing before the throne, and books were opened. The dead were judged according to what they had done, as recorded in the books. Now that sounds pretty frightening to us sinners, that 
One of those books shows all that we have done and all of us sinners know that we have committed all kinds of sin. But our God is a gracious bookkeeper. And listen to the merciful way that he deals with us. In that book that records every sin we've ever committed, he removes those records, those sheets that record those wrongs we have done. And he places them on his son. And his son takes the punishment for all those things. And then he takes his son's record, which is perfect, tempted in every way as we are, yet he was without sin. And God puts that in our record book. He, he removes all of our debts and gives us the perfectly paid-up full account of his son, our Savior. Extraordinary unreasonable bookkeeping, something that an earthly bookkeeper would be, would be fired for. But this is how the bookkeeper who sits on the fiery throne in his love keeps books on us. He gives us his son's perfection. He takes away all the wrong that he has done, that we have done, and in his mercy, those good things that we have done by his grace, in thankfulness for his grace, he leaves those in our books. He leaves the good that we have done. And he says, this, this shows that your trust is in me. You're not counting on your own goodness. You're counting on your Savior's love and sacrifice. His experiencing death so that we experience eternal life. And that brings us to another book that is there on Judgment Day. It, it's a book that is occasionally referenced in Scripture. It's a book that we might call something of a family register for the family of God. It, it's a book that Moses talked about when he came down from Mount Sinai and the great sin of building the golden calf had taken place and the worship of the golden calf. And Moses, in his love for the Israelites, interceded with God on behalf of them. And he said this, What a great sin these people have committed. They have made themselves for themselves gods of gold. But now, please forgive their sin. But if not, said Moses, blot me out of the book you have written. And Psalm 69 gives a name to that book. It speaks of the book of life. The judge with the book in the courtroom is safer than he seems because one of those books is the book of life where your name is graciously written in the precious blood of Jesus. The Ancient of Days had the first word in the world when he created the world with his word. When he said, let there be this and that in the world. And this same God, this same Ancient of Days, will have the last word on the last day of the world's existence. He will say, let there no longer be this earth and everything in it but he will also say, let there be a new heaven and a new earth, the home of righteousness, the home of his people, whose names are written in his family record, written in the blood of Jesus our Savior. This scene that God recorded for us from Daniel's vision is not here to scare us. It is here to strengthen us. It is here to cause us to look forward to that last great and glorious day of judgment. Amen. We join in confessing our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I, I believe in God, God the, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty maker, maker of heaven, heaven and earth, 
I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We continue with prayer. Lord God, our maker and preserver, we praise and thank you for all that you give us day after day. We are not worthy of all the mercies you show us. You have given us your precious word to nourish our souls and to protect us from the temptations of the devil, the world, and our sinful nature. We thank you for those who teach and preach your saving truth at this place and everywhere. Grant them a rich measure of patience, wisdom, and love. Heavenly Father, we pray that you shield us from every kind of danger, sudden catastrophe, terrors of crime, and the pain of disease. Watch over those who travel by land, sea, and air. Keep our loved ones from whatever perils may threaten them. Heal those who are sick, cheer those who are sad, calm those who are distressed, and comfort all who are old and infirm. Bless our land, our people, and those who hold offices of high trust. Keep our government and schools upright and strong for the advancement of good citizenship and useful vocations, that we may enjoy your gifts of peace, security, and well-being. Grant your blessing to every nation on earth. Where there are wars, may there be peace. Where there is hatred, let it be healed. Where there is poverty, danger, or disaster, come with your almighty power to help and restore. Hear us, Lord, as we bring you our private petitions. We bring these requests before you in the name of Jesus our Lord and ask you to hear us. Take all that we have, our bodies and minds, our time and skills, our ministries and offerings, and use them to your glory. We give ourselves to you that we may serve you in whatever way is pleasing in your sight. Amen. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, go in peace, live in harmony with one another, serve the Lord with gladness. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. We close with singing about being forever with the Lord. Amen. 
Watch my moving tent, a day's march nearer My father's house on high, home of my soul, how near at times to faith's foreseeing eye, the golden gates appear. Lord, be at my right hand, then can I never I shall stand, with you I shall prevail. So when my dying breath shall rend the veil in two, by death I shall escape from death to endless life with you. I'll know as I am known, how shall I love that word? And oft repeat before the throne, forever with the Lord. Here at St. Matthew Lutheran Church at 8444 West Melvina, we are always very happy to have visitors. We have the space for social distancing. Of course, as the law currently requires, you, you need a mask, but we have plenty of room on Sundays at 9 and on Monday nights at 6.30. We hope to see you in person sometime. God bless your week.